Well, shouldn't that come before the council? We just came all the way. We approved it. We approved it. We approved it. We approved it. We I do have a problem. Does everybody have to fill out an application? But I see Paterno just sent an email. We're going to move on. We're going to put a staff to be appointed by staff. <laughs> okay, but I guess I still think. I don't know. I, <laughs> How else are you going to do business in the city if somebody doesn't apply for something to show up? Well, I, I, Either an email or an app. Or well, and I get that, but it needs to be universal. So it's something because. In this form, they have to claim party affiliation, well, how long they've been there, their date of birth, a lot of other information that doesn't need to be out there. Yeah, and that's now all public, but one other person now doesn't have to share well, that. Yeah. Yeah. But, and, and I'm going to attempt to the staff. So when I'm going to be around with the party, it's going to have a staff will appoint him and Lieutenant Cooper um, on the staff side. Okay. Well, it's just, this is a thing that I think no, I is a long-term... I agree that... Because we're not. Right. We okay. Let's get started. Are we good to go? Can everybody please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Jerry, would you call roll, please? Marla? Never know. Yes. <laughs> um, Mayor Nicholson? Here. Vice Mayor Sanger? Here. Council Member Durst? Here. Espinoza? Here. Martinez? Here. Smith? Here. Well. Okay, we have a quorum. We'll move on down to a public hearing resolution physical year 2019-2020 budget amendment number one. I don't have anything on that. We'll move on down to citizens participation. Everybody will have five minutes to speak tonight. Anybody like to come up and speak? Okay, go ahead, Scott. <coughs> Honorable Mayor and Council, I'd just like to thank the Council for their support over the last couple of um, weeks with a personal tragedy. And I'd like to thank staff, I'd like to thank Dustin for stepping up and the staff for keeping things going in my absence and the flexibility to attend to the things I needed to do. Thank you. My thoughts are with you, Scott. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like, like to speak? Okay. If not, We'll move on down to City Council reports. The first one we have is the Board of Adjustments. Uh, that would be myself, and I have nothing to report. Next item would be COG, and that would be myself also, and I have nothing to report there. There's a meeting. <laughs> yeah, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> so there is a meeting tomorrow for COG in, where's it? in Hannah at 6 o'clock. Next we'll move down to DDA, Councilwoman Smith. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll be brief. Um, DDA, DDA has been very busy this summer, but uh, the most recent event they've undertaken was the Pride and Passion Ball on September 7th. It was very successful, and uh, it was for the downtown splash pad. And I, we don't have all of the uh, figures completely um, down to the last penny, but we think somewhere around $40,000 would please. So it was our highest wow. year yet, and the community was wonderful. So um, I just wanted to just put that out there. Um, the, um, the Splash Pad Committee will be getting together next month to finalize the design to go out for bid early in 2020, and hopefully for completion by Friday, July 10th, to kick off the summer fest. And 2020. Okay, uh, dates to remember is the facade celebration on September 24th from 5 to 7 p.m. There'll be a presentation at 6 p.m. at the depot. 
and uh, she says this 10 year program is coming to a successful close, but we'll be able to show folks and give tours and have a little celebration going then. Uh, Art Beat will be Friday, October 4th from 4 to 8 p.m. And, and Saturday, October 5th from 10 to 2 p.m. Um, Rome's DDA has received two quotes from Squat. <laughs> My mouth isn't working tonight. The skyline lighting on the top of the downtown buildings. And they're working through the steps with legal installation, electric, and uh, they'll be meeting with property owners soon on, on the, the lighting. And they would like to have them in by the holidays. So we'll mark that on the calendar. I'd love it too. Um, special announcement is that we want you to mark your calendar starting Tuesday, September 24th in one week. We, the downtown, the city, and the state will be asking you, the community, to vote online every day to help Rollins, Wyoming win critical preservation funding. Stay tuned for more details. And then just I want to slide in really quick. The draft on the Great Divide Economic Group has been received yesterday by uh, Cindy Wallace and the Economic Development Office. I'll get a copy of that and get that out to you. We're going to have a meeting on that to finalize it before she, uh, before she leaves us. So thank you. Thank you, Linda. And we'll move on down to Rollins Planning Commission, Councilman Estimova. Uh, Mayor Nicholson and Council, I don't have nothing to report. We had a lack of quorum, so our next meeting will be October 8th. Okay. Thank you. Next, we'll move on down to Urban Systems, Councilman Sanger. Nothing new to report. Okay. I'll move on down to item five minutes, approval of the minutes from September 3rd, 2019, regular minutes. Councilman Martinez. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to approve the, the minutes of September 3rd, 2019 as presented. Second. I have a second from Councilwoman Smith. Any questions or comments in regards to that motion? If not, Marla, would you open online voting? Voting is closed and the motion carries with 68. Thank you. I'll move on down to correspondence reports and information. Item A, local government liability pool or vacancy notices. Honorable Mayor and Council Members, um, the city received notice from the local government liability pool of Wyoming that um, they will be accepting nominations for board vacancies. Two board positions will be open um, as of January 1st, 2020. One opening is for a county commissioner position and one is an at-large position. The board positions are three-year terms and each LGLP member may nominate someone for the positions. Nominations for the county commissioner shall only be from a governmental entity that participates in the pool and we participate in that pool. The at-large position can be, nom can be um, someone that doesn't participate in the pool. So it can be anyone that's nominated and voted on. Okay. So nominations are to be received by LGP LGLP's office no later than October 31st, 2019. And any nominations received after that date will not be considered. And I included um, the forms that they sent. Um, if you'd like me to send the nominations um, to LGLP, um, by what I read here, anybody can nominate someone. Okay. So, so I was going to ask you, so is the city the member or is... is the city, the city so is the can, member. So does the city make one nomination or does... I, I, you see what I'm at? Or I, I do. Um, I believe, and Linda, you sit on this board, so please correct me if I'm incorrect. By reading what LGLP sent, anyone can make a nomination for um, for the board. They may, uh, if I may, Mayor. Let's go ahead. Uh, the other thing is that this board can nominate a person uh, that we would like to serve. 
if we have someone who uh, is on a special district or is working with us, we can nominate that person for in that large position. Okay. Okay. What was the date on that, Marla? October? 31st. 31st. Okay. <laughs> Should I just address that maybe a little bit further? Sure, go ahead. The current chairman is Brad Bassey, who uh, is at large. And we switched. I was at large, and I went to the council position to, let, to allow him to run for that. And so he does not know if he's going to run again. And then the county commissioner from Sheridan uh, has told us that he um, – he is not going to run for county commissioner again, so he will. His position will be wide open. So, we have someone I think would be good. We should probably nominate. Okay. Any more questions on that? We'll move on down to item B, the Wyoming Community Gas 2019 projects. So each year, Wyoming Community Gas returns thousands of dollars in revenue to member communities for designated community projects to benefit our citizens and community. The City of Rollins will receive this year $10,140.07 from Wyoming Community Gas for a community project. The Wyoming Community Gas Board decided to distribute the project, project checks in May of 2020. Total distribution each year is based on anticipated monies received by Wyoming Community Gas from June of 2019 to May of 2020. Wyoming Community Gas Board of Directors request a designated project for our community as soon as possible, but preferably no later than December 31st, 2019. I sent this information out to City Council and um, at this time, I've received two suggestions. Phase two art project for the 6th Street walking tunnel. <coughs> phase, phase one would be the Washington Street walking underpass. That's, that was completed with, um, with some Wyoming community gas funds. <coughs> and, um, place, and, and another project was to replace handrails, et cetera, at the playground on the playground equipment at Tully Park. Um, please contact me if you have any other suggestions for community projects. This item will be placed on the October 15, 2019 agenda for Council's action to approve a project. Um. Do you have a question? Uh, yes. Oh, go ahead, Louie. Yes, I um, <laughs> came up with three that maybe the Council might consider. And uh, when I was down at the music in the park, uh, I was noticing some of the people that were handicapped with canes and say, walkers going up to those uh, vendors. Uh, there's such a slope right there for them to try standing, you know, while they're trying to order something from the vendors. Uh, I thought maybe we should continue the sidewalk there at Washington Park so they'll have a flat surface. The other one was uh, some of those light poles that are there at Washington Park. It would be nice to possibly replace those with decorative light poles. And there was a third one. Oh, that piece of property that uh, <coughs> that's, uh, the city's going to be owning or whatever there by the nurses' quarters uh, to make the north side of that as a handicapped parking where you could probably fit eight cars maybe in there, hard to say, but uh, uh, that way, you know, people that do park there in the handicapped parking have an easier access to the music in the park or whatever they do there. At the mm -hmm. Oh, anyway, that's it. Okay, thank, thank you, Lloyd. Mm -hmm. Councilman Durst? I, I guess I was just a little confused because I thought that they had stopped giving the money to the city or they had opened it up to nonprofits as well. So they have Is two, that two separate two programs. Separate programs. Okay. I mm -hmm. thought that it was a and I think what you're thinking about is the grant yeah. program. Okay, okay. Very possibly so. Yeah. 
Councilmember, my Mark question was with the monies we had last year. We had the star. Mm -hmm. I don't know where we're at with it. We had a sign that was going to be built at Martinez Park. We're working on the uh, sign and the bench still. The bench was ordered, and it, yeah, there was a problem with the ordering or something. Yeah, so we're, we're moving along. We'll, okay. get, we'll, we'll have those done. There, there wasn't a problem with the, the bench. It's no. still in process. No. And we're just waiting to receive it. It has been ordered. Yeah, yeah. okay. So, yeah. All right, I'm just wondering where was that? Yeah. Huh? And I can't answer. That was we're sorry. On the, on the welding guys to tell us whether they can do it. Still or not. welding up there? No, whether they can do it. Or not. They oh, have a new okay. welding guy, so they don't know if they can do it. Okay. okay. All right, we'll have, maybe we'll have to redesign something. And I'll, uh, I'll put something together and get it out to you with the, the five now projects that we have. And okay. Let's decide. Thank you, Marta. Next, we'll move on down to department monthly reports. Anybody have any questions or comments in regards to that? Okay. We'll move on down to item seven, approval of tonight's agenda. And get a motion for that. That's one saying. I move to approve the September 17, 2019 City Council agenda as presented. Second. We have a first and a second. Any questions or comments in regards to that motion? If not, Marla, would you open online voting? Online voting is closed and the motion carries with six yeas. Okay. Now we'll move on down to board appointments. Uh, on street parking advisory group. All right, so we have some applicants here that sent in some interest to be on this advisory board. Um, I have spoken to one already, which couldn't make it here tonight, and that was uh, John Pacheco. So we'll just move on down here to uh, Kyle Rosentrader, if you would like to come up and speak or. Well, can we bring a microphone? Yeah, we could do that. No, I can make it. Uh, I may use a little bit. I'll make it. Mm -hmm. We got all night. Just briefly tell us about yourself and why you'd want to serve on this board. Okay. Mayor, Councilman. Um, I'm Kyle Rosentrigger. Um, I've uh, lived here since 19... Um, 76, um, was a deputy sheriff for 23 years. Um, prior to that, I welded in the oil field for City Service Gas Company. Um, the reason why um, I would like to be on the board is I have lots of trailers, but I have property to park on. So it, do, it doesn't matter to me which way it goes, but to sit on the board and hear um, what all we can come up with. The other thing that I don't know if everybody's aware of it, I go all over the United States certifying canine teams. Um, and I take my camp trailer to, is to stay in. Because it's easy for me to get my wheelchair in and out and stuff. Anyhow, uh, I've been to lots of cities with um, no trailers on the street and to cities that you can park a trailer on the street and have talked to individuals about it both ways. And so um, uh, I felt this would be a, a committee I could be on and be um, look at it as law enforcement and also as a citizen and a person with trailers. Um, but also I have a place to park them goes e either way. Okay. Thank, right, thank you. you. Now we'll move on down to uh, Ralph Glenn. You'd like to come up and tell us a little bit about yourself and why you'd like to be on the, the committee. I uh, served 18 and a half years on the council, and during that time, I was on the 
order adjustment along the COG, the Planning Commission, the Urban System, and the Urban Rec Board. Also spent 10 years on the TEAL Board. That's the state board that gives the money to do the depot, do all your walk paths and stuff. And in that 10 years I spent, six years of it I wasn't a councilman. You were supposed to be a councilman, but I was recommended by the city put my name in the WAM, and WAM only uh, recommended my name to the, the state, so the state and the governor appointed me. And then when my term was up, I wasn't a member of the council, but the WAM recommended the state keep me on it, so I did. Until, uh, so they, uh, well, they changed things around. I don't think the deal board even in existence anymore. So, but anyway, <clears throat> I uh, got trailers of my own. I never park them on the street. I'm only down to three. But uh, I'm interested in more of traffic, you know, because you go down the streets, and, and if they're not parked in a certain area, you, you, you can't see. There are traffic hazards, some of them. And it depends on if you're going to leave, let people stay in them. If you get the slide outs and they're close to the street, you know, they will because of a traffic hazard. And that's one reason I'd like to be on there. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Rob. Next we have is Tanya Roman. Please come up and tell us a little bit about yourself and why you'd like to sit on the board. Um, I'm Tanya Lehman. I know most of you know me because I uh, am more than welcome to share my opinion on things. Uh, I just feel this is an opportunity for me to serve on a board. I do not have any trailers, campers, anything like that. Um, so I'm not biased either way as far as where they should be. But I am very um, glad it has gone to a committee because I feel it is a topic like the deer where you have half the people in town want them all off the street and the other half want them all on the street. And um, hopefully we can gather some information to show it is a problem or it isn't a problem and some viable solutions. Um, I would welcome the opportunity to serve. Thank right. you. Thank you, Tanya. Next, we have Judy Dixon. If you'd like to come up and tell us about yourself and why you'd like to be on the board. Thank you, Mary Nickerson, Council. Uh, I'm Judy Dixon. Um, I've been a registered nurse for 30 years in Rollins at the hospital. And after that, I taught uh, the CNA program at the Carbon County Higher Ed. And then I retired, <laughs> happily with my, uh, my fifth wheel, uh, Rob's boat, uh, side by side, which we haul in a cargo trailer. Um, so I have a, 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 and a property owner, so I have a vested interest in this, uh, in this topic. Um, in my heart, I'll, let, I'll tell you right up front, my personal opinion is that I do not like uh, the idea of having permanent parking of RVs on our Rollins streets for a variety of reasons, uh, not least of which is the aesthetics in the community. On the other hand, I realize that there are people who have purchased homes with the idea that they would be able to do that or they bought RVs uh, Knowing, knowing they could park them in front of their homes. So I think that, um, and having served on the city council in the past as well, I know it's always, um, it's, we've addressed it before, you've addressed it before, and I think appointing a committee is, is a great idea. So um, I would just like to serve on it because I think that between the two sides, we can come together with some kind of a resolution that will work for the city as a whole. Thank you, Judy. Uh 
Next, we have uh, Janita Colton. If you'd like to come up and tell us about yourself and why you'd like to be on the board. Hopefully I pronounced your name right. You did. You did very well. I'm Janita Colton. I've lived in Rollins for 29 years. Um, own a home here. And I'd like to serve on this committee because I'm very concerned about the safety on the streets, especially in the wintertime. And I don't own trailers. And I have quite a bit of, of a board experience in other groups and feel like I could maybe be a, a contributor to that, a contributor to solving problems with this issue. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> All right, next we have uh, Cheryl Bailey. You'd like to come up and tell us about yourself and why you'd like to be on the board. You'll notice the number of us walk very slowly, <laughs> and that's the whole thing. It's a safety issue on the streets for those of us that cannot get across that snow. <clears throat> My name is Cheryl Bailey. I have lived here since July of 2000. I moved here because I love the community. I will stay here because I love the community. And as you've noticed from some of my letters to the editor and speaking here at the council before, that I am extremely concerned and upset that there are so many trailers, boats, and RVs parked on our streets, which as the other people have said is definitely a safety issue. I have actually had a little kid run out in front of a trailer. Fortunately, I don't go past the 30 miles per hour and I was able to stop, and his father was there and lectured him, and then the little boy turned and waved to me. Hopefully the lecture was, be careful. But I want us all as a community to be careful about the children and us slow-moving el elderly that need to cross streets when you can't see what's coming. There are a couple of streets in town that are extremely wide. Maybe one of my ideas is you could maybe designate those as the parking streets for trailers. But the majority of our streets are so narrow, you can't even get one car down when there are cars and trailers parked on both sides of the street. I will be glad to serve on this committee and keep my opinion going. I do not own a camper, a trailer, a boat, or anything. I have plenty of place in front of my own home where people would be welcome to park theirs. I'm gonna charge them though. <laughs> because I do not believe that they belong on our city streets. I will again refer to Mr. Sanger's comment. Our city streets are thoroughfares, not parking lots. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. <coughs> the last one we have here is Dodge, and I cannot pronounce the first name. Is it Martha? Martha. Martha, Martha. okay. Could you please come up, Martha, and tell us about yourself and why you'd like I to be on I go by Marty. Marty, okay. So, I never liked my name. <laughs> <laughs> when I got away from home, I changed it. Marty. Um, my husband and I have lived here for 17 years. We came here from the Bahamas, and where obviously parking on the street is not a problem, uh, especially in winter time. But we came from the east, and there many towns have signs posted that you cannot park on the street from the 1st of November till the 1st of April so that they can plow, which is something we don't get in El Rancho, but that's neither here nor there. But I do think there's a very big safety factor. I know that there's somebody parked kitty corner from us that when you come down Los Altos, you cannot see who's coming from the right-hand side. And I, we had a tree in our front yard when we first bought our house, and somebody hit it and took it out. And so I think there is concern about safety. I worry about the children because it seems like 30 miles doesn't an hour doesn't get obeyed very much. But that's not the issue with the trailers and boats. Um, 
I've had to have the rescue squad several times. And when they come, the police and the fire department come too. And so you get all these vehicles. And on some of these streets, I don't know how you could get those vehicles down there to stop to take care of whoever they've been called for. And so I think that if it could be a one-way street and only parking on one side, that might be a solution to that. But I do have concerns. And because I've lived where you couldn't park on the street for part of the year, nobody seemed to find that a real problem. But I know some of these streets are very, very narrow. I think they were houses were built without driveways or you can't access it from the alley. Like in back of our place on El Rancho, you can get into the alley on the west side, but then people have put up um, fences and they've taken up all of that alley space to put it as part of their property. And so I know we'd like to put a shed in our backyard, but we can't access the backyard except from the front where they can't get a shed over. And so I have a few concerns, but I love Rollins. We've been very happy here, and I think we intend to stay here forever. And <laughs> that's all I have to say. All right, thank you, Marty. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The next applicant we have here is Mike Bicerno, but Mike, I'm gonna hold yours off and allow Scott to come up with a couple of people from staff to put on the board, if you don't mind. Okay, thank you. So at this time, um, I'd like to make a motion to nominate a few people. You know, and initially I was looking at a few people, maybe four, maybe five, but everybody that came up tonight I think has some pretty valid points, and I'd like to see both both sides of the scale, because I think it's very important that it's not one-sided, that this group really looks at it as a whole and how it's going to affect everybody. So my motion now is to appoint Johnny Pacheco, Kyle Rosentrader, Ralph Glenn, Tanya Lumen, Judy Dixon, Janita Calton, Cheryl Bailey, and um, Marty Dodge. I would second that. <coughs> Any questions or comments in regards to all that? Councilman Smith? I move that nominations cease and we cast unanimous <laughs> vote. All right. <laughs> uh, Marla, would you open online voting, please? It's a good thing everybody in town didn't send in an application. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, voting is closed and the motion carries with six yeas. Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. Appreciate that. Thank you. So, Marla, I never voted on that. Ma'am, I, I say yes. Yeah, but I never yeah, actually voted. I didn't vote for you. <laughs> Did it really come through? Yeah. No, nothing popped on my screen at all. It's our new. Uh, but I, I, oh, I will verbally say that I support <laughs> what we did. Yeah, because I'm like, yeah. I was looking for it. All right, now we'll move on down to uh, unfinished business. Ordinance, second reading, amending Rollins Municipal Code, Title 10, Vehicles and Traffic. Can I get a motion? You need a motion, and you don't second it. Mayor, point of yeah. order. 
what we could do is move to move to uh, adopt it, and then we just don't make a second. That's what I was saying. Councilman Martinez. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we uh, pass the ordinance on second reading, amending Rollins Municipal Code Title 10, Vehicles and Traffic. Okay. Can we get a second? If there's no second, then the motion dies. Okay. Thank you. Now we'll move on down to item B, <coughs> ordinance, third and final reading, amending Rollins Municipal Code Title 8, Health and Safety. Councilman Durst. I move to postpone the final, third and final reading until the next meeting. Um, some of the information that we had requested in the last workshop, we weren't able to get it yet. Um, two of them, the right of way information as far as who technically has the right of way and whose responsibility is, we didn't get the feedback on that. And then I had asked for some information on the part where all the, the <coughs> Customer information is sent to the city clerk, and I had asked for some information on that that we weren't able to get to yet as well. Okay. So I would, I apologize, I did that all wrong. I should have just shushed after the motion. Can I, for clarification, what, what do you exactly want for the right of way issue? I wasn't aware of that. Um, well, there was, <clears throat> so there's some, and I, I don't know right off the top of my head. I can find it for to you tomorrow. Okay, if you just but there's some, the there's some information about it says everybody's responsible for cutting the trees in the right of way, but there was some confusion as to whether the city owned that right of way or whether the public owns that right of way for that. It, it depends on the area of town, but I can give you that information. So we, we do have that available. So, um, okay. And I can go back to the, I can give you the ordinance and more history than you probably want on it to make a decision and understand that uh, that'd be for later today, but I get you that information if you would like. So I do have that. God, if I, if I can interject something, I, I believe that it was, the research was done on it. We, we do it have came research. out that apparently I always thought that we voted on that uh, several years ago. They gave the, the trees uh, to the city. The, the, that the trees on the right of way belong to the city, but apparently that wasn't the case. He, I, I really do remember it, but Councilman apparently Martinez. it didn't pass. Did we get a, a second before we start any oh, discussion on that? Sorry, that was my fault. I should oh, have okay. I'll, I'll second it. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Now we have a first and a second. We can open the floor I, I for discussion. I can give you some, uh, it was brought to my attention while I was out. Uh, yes. I reviewed some historic information. I think I have a little bit more information that may make it clearer. Okay. Uh, it may be another topic of uh, direction we want to go in the future since some of those positions were eliminated over time. But okay. That, okay. That's, that's fine. That's fine with me. I thought, thought, thought it was addressed. I'll be prepared for the next meeting. So, so now that I apologize, I shouldn't have explained all that. My bad. So my, my, I only would want to postpone it for just one more time to just get that all put together. I understand why. I mean, I get it. Okay. <coughs> okay. So we have a motion and a second on the floor. Okay. Is there any more discussion? <coughs> Regards that. So the motion is to postpone the third and final reading until the October 2nd, 1st, October 1st meeting. Okay. Marla, would you open line on voting, please? I, if I could say something to you, mine, mine will will not change for me when I want to go to the next issue. Okay. So I think there's some voodoo going. Some internet stuff going on because it's not working really fast. Yeah. We can go ahead and do some verbal, Marla. Okay. Um, Council Member Martinez. Yes. Um, yes. And Mayor Nicholson. Yes. Okay. So the motion. The vote, motion is closed and it carries with six yeas. Councilman Smith. Um, clerk, Madam Clerk, I am not getting the little bar to vote and yet I'm turning up voting yes. Yeah. I did vote yes, but this happened the last time. 
Yeah. Or something. I've got some little monsters running around somewhere. Gremlins. They're called gremlins. gremlins. So has, has it, did everybody vote correctly? I mean, is there any? I voted yes. Okay. Yeah. I voted yes. I have 68. <laughs> All right. We will move on down to new business. Approval of the payroll. Councilman Singer. Move to approve the August 18th, 2019 through August 31st, 2019 payroll register for $223,559.64. Second. We have a first and a second. Do we have any discussion in regards to that motion? If there's no discussion, Marla, would you open online voting? And mine seems a little <laughs> So I'm getting the the box to vote, but my screen is still stuck on the citizens um, parking. Mm -hmm. It might be, a, you know, I, it's working for me, that's all I can say. It ain't working for me either. Because I still don't have Martinez's or your vote. I just hit yes. Okay. I'd say yes. Okay, did everybody else vote yes? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> 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 So the next one, we have approval of accounts payable. Uh, Councilwoman Smith. I move to approve the accounts payable register for the period of August 30th, 2019 to September 11th, 2019 in the amount of $528,048.84. Second. Councilman Sanger. Second. We have a first and a second. Any questions or comments in regards to that motion? If there's not, Marta, would you open online voting? I just had to refresh my body. It didn't, yeah. it didn't refresh. No. That's never that was an answer. Would you like to do a verbal vote? Yes. yes. Say yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, and yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. But mine ain't opening up. Motion carries with 68. Okay, thank you, Marla. We'll move on down to item C, uh, resolution, Tully Park final replant. And Danielle's going to fill us in on that. Honorable Mayor and City Council, um, I'm bringing the final plot for Tully Park to you guys. Um, both you guys reviewed or approved the preliminary plot as well as Planning Commission. It did go back to the Planning Commission for final, and they approved that as well with no changes from the first one. Um, so just a refresher, we are dividing it into uh, track A, B, and C, and there's also a small piece of the corner that's actually El Rancho Road that we will vacate. If you have questions, I will answer. We get a motion? Councilman Durst. I move to approve the resolution approving the final plat of Tully Park as recommended by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Councilman Smith. Okay. So we have a first and a second. Any questions or discussion in regards to that? Is, is, is this the swap with the hospital? So this is the uh, plat so that we will have a proper legal description. So. Um, I will, if you guys approve this tonight, work on getting the mylars signed and then filed with the county. And I believe legal will take it over from here to actually do the swap portion. So this actually breaks it up into the different plats so that we're able to do something with a certain part. Right, and still retain the park areas. I, mean, I guess my question would be what would be the argument against it? Just if you disagree. Just don't think that's the right choice or something. That's Okay. There's no no more questions. Marla, would you open online voting, please? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Danielle. Yes. <laughs> online voting is closed, and the motion carries with 68. That's disgusting. Now we'll move on down to item D, a resolution uh, for 2020 and 14 underage drinking laws. Uh, grant, a UEDL grant. All right. Honorable Mayor of Council, the Rollins Police Department is requesting approval from the city to submit a grant to uh, 
to the Wyoming Association of Sheriffs and Chiefs of Police in the amount of $3,160.85. The grant subsidizes costs incurred for additional police efforts in enforcing underage drinking laws, specifically during Harbor County School District Number 1 games and dances, music in the, in the park, and during specific targeted dates throughout the year. Okay. Got a motion? That's one Smith. Move to approve the resolution authorizing the submission of the Wyoming Association of Sheriff and Chiefs of Police 2020 enforcing underage drinking grant in the amount of $3,160.85 to provide and enhance collaborative efforts in support, protection, and education regarding underage drinking for the youth of Rollins. Second. We have a first and a second. Any questions or comments in regards to that? I would just like to add on the um, resolution page, it has me down as Stephen L. Nicholson. A little typo there. We'll correct that to Stephen S. <laughs> Marla, would you open online voting? Sure. Yeah, that ground one right under that. Yeah, he's busy tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. We'll move on down to item E, Resolution Carbon County Pacific Purpose Tax Joint Powers Board Joint Powers Agreement. Sorry. <coughs> Honorable oh, Mayor right. and Council Members, um, the Specific Purpose Tax Joint Powers Board is starting to work and get on a roll. Um, Barbara Bonds is the Bonds attorney out of Cheyenne that the, um, the, the Joint Powers Board is going to use again. And um, she sent to all the clerks of the municipalities of Carbon County this resolution um, to add Dixon and Hannah as members because they didn't bond their projects on the 2009 question. So we're adding them to the this new question and change the name of the board, removing 2009 from the title so bonds can be issued for financing projects no matter the year of the commencement of the tax. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve the resolution and the amendment of the Joint Powers Agreement and add Dixon and Hannah as members and change the name of the board by removing the 2009 the title so that bonds can be issued for financing projects uh, no matter the year of the commencement of the tax. Okay. We have a first and a second. Is there any questions in regards to that motion? Any questions from Marla? If not, would you open online board? We'll move on down to F, Resolution Physical Year 2019 to 2020 Budget Amendment Number 1. Honorable Mayor and Council, um, before you is a budget amendment resolution um, for some cleanup items that we have. Um, in the current budget, I did send a little more detail out um, for a better understanding from the operations standpoint of, of what these budget amendments accomplish. Um, it's a total of 137,500. 137,500. Um, these will come out to an addition to our fund balance, which we do have. Um, any questions? You get a motion? Councilman Sanger? Move to approve the fiscal year 2019 2020 budget amendment resolution number one as presented. Councilwoman Smith? Second. Okay. We have a first and a second. Does anybody have any discussion? I saw that this was just just transfer. 
like just cleaning up one into another, wasn't it? Wasn't it just a couple transfers to? It is an increase to our fund balance. Um, I'm sorry, it's just not pulling up at the moment, you know. Yeah. It's a gremlin, so. so. Um, I, I did see it, but that was a couple of days. When we do the initial budget, we estimate the fund balance. Um, we do have enough room to cover this to raise the fund balance and still be fine. Um, and then the recreation portion is just a transfer of funds from the general. Um, it is a section of the general fund that it has its own fund. So that portion is a transfer. Okay. I have a question. I don't know if it's appropriate at this time. It has to do with uh, the budget. Mm -hmm. uh, in regard to the Tin Can Hill project, the funding for that project, um, I would like to see us that before any money is ex used out of that budget, that it comes before the council. And uh, and so that's 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 the question that I'm putting before the the, the council is that, and I make a uh, I'll make a motion to that effect. Since we're talking about changing the budget, we might as well add that in there too. That would have to come up on to be put on the agenda um, for an item to be voted on or an well, amendment. We're discussing the budget. Well, I know, but you're asking for an action item, and there's already an action item that we're talking about that they're not related they're, they are budget but they're two different budgetary type items so we just have to okay then okay go ahead we'll vote on this one and then I'll ask to have that placed on the agenda okay okay Is that correct that would be the correct way okay so we have the first and the second any more discussion in regards to this one <coughs> if not um, Marla would you have final voting Yes. Online voting is closed and the motion carries with 68. Now, Councilman Mar <laughs> Martinez, if you want to. I'm requesting a change in our budget, not a change in the figures or the amount or the project. It's just that I, I feel that um, when it comes time to start spending money out of that budget that we appropriated for the Tin Can Hill project, that uh, the staff come before the council and, and tell us what they're going to do before they spend the money. So would you like to have that placed on the next agenda by resolution? I thought we could do it now with, by okay. a motion. So you're going to? Rather than put it in, I was going to do it as a resolution, but I thought we could do it just as a, as a motion and see what this council felt about that. So a motion from the floor, and you're seeking a second? I'm seeking a second. That's the motion. Okay, so you got to give me a minute so I can add this to the agenda, okay? Okay, yeah. going to just put Tin Can Hill project, pro property project. Sounds good to me.
Okay, so can I read this back to you and you tell me if I understand it properly? So the motion's going to be moved to approve prior to any money spent on the Tin Can Hill property project. Expenditures of funds will be presented to City Council. That's right. Okay. So we'll need a second? Second. We have a first and a second. Any discussion in regards to that? Okay, now I've got to refresh. Let's go. Honorable Mayor and Council, when the City Council at the time agreed to venture into this project and down the road, we put our share of money away there to secure grant funding with the obligation and the intent to see this project through. I don't know why this project would be any different than the other $31 million that are appropriated by the budget and are handled through a purchasing policy that has been adopted by the City Council. And to put another layer of oversight on that I think is burdensome for the project and everything else. We've agreed to go to that. We'll present the project. If the Council wants to back out of the project and we can return all the money, we would be happy to do that too. But to add another layer of this, as in good faith, it was our gesture to put some money in the pot to move forward for this project. And we have a purchasing policy that's established. And this is kind of going outside those parameters of our normal purchasing policy. I would just recommend against that. Thank you, Scott. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Councilman Doar. In response to that, Scott, my thinking is this, that I have no problem with the project. I've always told you that. Where I have a project that I've never seen any numbers, never seen any numbers of how much it's going to cost. I've never seen any numbers as to who's going to pay for the upkeep of this project and what we're going to do there. That's the two things. The other thing is not one Council member here has even discussed or talked other than the information that you've given to us at work session. We've never been to any meetings. We never met with developers. We haven't done anything. And we're just saying it's okay and we appropriate $175,000. I don't think that's the way we should have went about it myself. I've been involved with numerous developments. The truck stop out south of town there, when they came, they opened up a map. They brought their lawyers. They told us how we were going to do things. They were asking, this is what we want from the city. We went through the whole procedure. This one, we didn't go through anything other than what information you give us. Yes, I did go out there and stand and I agreed with cleaning up the area. I don't have a problem with that. I guess the Council agreed to apply for the grant. And we accepted that. And in good faith, we agreed to put up $175,000 towards the overall project. And at that time, we discussed the dollar amounts that this project could cost the city. But it didn't tell us how much it's going to cost to maintain it. We can't maintain what we've got now. The reason we haven't given you a cost for the maintaining of it is we haven't finished with the final project scoping and the development of the project. Okay, so this motion is basically saying to you, when you come up with these numbers and you bring them before us, then we can tell you to go ahead and spend the money. Is that a problem? No. I tell you what, it would even be better. I'll tell you what, we'll bring you the project. If you don't want to do the project and you don't want to spend the funds, kill the project. You can do it that way. That would be a lot better. I mean, either way. That's fine. That wasn't my intent. I'm going to speak on behalf of the project because, but against the motion. I think that the project has been on the books since 1970s, 1980s. It is a drainage project. We've had a development company step up to the plate for their development. They've asked that it be confidential for a long period of time. And the preliminary work that has been done with the state agencies is ongoing. And I believe in my heart that when it comes time to put figures down on paper, we will get those. I think that maybe what you maybe need to be included in more of the discussions. But from my point of view, we are going to have to do that drainage ditch no matter what we do. And this is a way to do it in concert with the state and other private entities. And it will cost us far less money doing it this way 
than if we had to go do it ourselves, by ourselves. So, and I don't see a need to putting more restrictions on it except just to be more informed on what's going on with it from time to time. Fair enough. Any more questions or comments? Marta, would you open online voting, please? My vote will be a no, Marta. I believe uh, Beverly Harris all working correctly. One G, yes. Online voting is closed and the motion fails with Council Member Martinez and Durst voting yay and Mayor Nicholson, Vice Mayor Sanger, <coughs> Council Member Espinoza and Smith nay. We'll move on down to executive session. <coughs> we get a motion for that. Councilman Smith. Yes, I move that we go into executive session at 8.30 p.m. Pursuant to Wyoming Statute 16.44052 to consider the appointment, employment, right to practice, or dismissal of a public officer, professional person, or employee, or to hear complaints or charges brought against an employee, professional person, or officer, unless the employee, professional person, or officer requests a public hearing. The governing body may exclude from any public or private hearing during the examination of a witness any or, any or all other witnesses in the matter being investigated. Following the hearing or executive session, the governing body may deliberate on its decision in executive session, nine, to consider or receive any information classified as confidential by law. We have a first, we have a second. I'll second it. We have a sec first and a second. Any questions in regards to that motion? Well, Marla, would you open online voting, please? Online voting is closed and the motion carries with six yeas. Okay, we're in executive session. Thank you.